We are here in the green studio at Care of C with Brianna Davis. Hello, Brianna. Hi. This is a thrill. This is actually your first time on radio. Mm-hmm. Very first time. And we have some songs upcoming that we're recording here. And quite the singer you are. <laughs> Thank you. We are now going to hear Brianna Davis and her version of All of Me. You are a middle school student in Greeley, and there was a really exciting event Mm -hmm. out in Greeley. I recently have met Carissa Gabrielle, very talented uh, dance dancer and dance teacher with Northern Colorado Dance Fusion, Mm -hmm. and it was a real thrill. I have the uh, RAMP program, Rising Artist Mentorship Program, and Live in Color was going out on out there and there were a couple songs that some of the musicians from this project played and then the dancers actually had a choreographed routine to a couple of these songs and I just thought that that was an incredible uh, concept that we put into action. (laughs) It was. um, It was very exciting. Uh, I got to see the whole documentary of all the people and they put me in the documentary and I sang if I Ain't Got You by Alicia Keys, and everything went well. Yeah, and we're, we're going to continue collaborating with Chris, so we're really uh, excited about that. The Alicia Keys song, as performed by Brianna Davis, If I Ain't Got You. Some people live for the fortune. Some people live just for the fame. Some people live for the power, yeah. Some people live just to play the game. Some people think that the physical things define what's with 
Also, uh, we wanted to mention your voice teacher. Mm -hmm. Alicia LaFord. I've known her ever since I was done with my talent show in Legacy Elementary. And ever since that talent show, she's always been my teacher and about for three and a half years. So she's with the Music Depot in Greeley. Right. Now, speaking of the number three, three years of age Mm -hmm. is when you really first began singing. Right. Correct. (laughs) When I sang at my talent show, when I was nine years old in the third grade, I sang One Step at a Time by Jordan Sparks. And I really thought that that was a good song for that. It's because that was my first step into really being the singer that I imagined myself being. That One Step at a Time really made sense at that time. And you having on your dad's side, Kenny, hanging out here with us, uh, playing drums and bongos. So you grew up with that experience. Then he's got music going back on his family side as well. Mm -hmm. My family, they all play piano and they all have learned how to play piano for years. And they all learned and my dad plays, like he said, bongos and drums. So that's where I get my musical background from. I think it's really cool too, because Geary, Indiana, being the town where your dad grew up, being Mm -hmm. where the Jackson 5 grew up. Right. So let's talk, Brianna, about your first exposure to talent shows. The first one being at Legacy Elementary School in 2009 was your first show. Correct. That one being my first show, that was, it was a little bit, I was nervous a lot because that was the first time I sang in front of a whole bunch of people. I didn't know how people would react and it was very nerve wracking to be honest and the reaction that I got out of all the people, that's how I want everything to be. Like, when I become a singer, when I get older, when I become a professional singer, that's how I want them to react all the time and to enjoy my music. So in 2010, the Loveland You Got Talent was your first talent show outside of the school realm. Right. That one, I thought that was really fun. It's because there was a lot of different acts. It's because they weren't just all singers. So there were a bunch of all different acts. And I thought that I did really well and I got third place. So at least I got placed. (laughs) That's really great. And then Mm -hmm. the next year you went back. 
Right. Next year, I went back and I sang If I Were a Boy by Beyonce and I won first place. That's really great. And just to throw out there, really nice to get the support you get from your parents and your family. That's right. really what makes this all possible. Mm-hmm. All of it possible. If I didn't have my dad, you know, doing all this stuff for me, I'm really grateful that I have a good parent like that. Here's the song Brianna sang in the Colorado You Got Talent competition at last. So you've taken an interesting tact. You have gotten into singing numerous national anthems. Right. And let's talk a little bit about the ones that you've done. There are high schools in your area where you live. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's been some exposure for you. Mm. The local high schools, they've been going good. The national anthems. The first one that I did at UNC, that one was very, very nerve wracking, but everything went out fine and I enjoyed it when I was singing it and Apparently, everybody else did. And the other local high schools, they went very well. And everybody, they said, oh, good job, good job. And that's all that I like to hear. And knowing that I'm doing good just makes me want to keep doing this more and more. You know, obviously, Rihanna, everybody's heard the national anthem and knows the national anthem. However, even seasoned performers at times do not make it through the national (laughs) anthem. It's not necessarily the easiest song to sing. No, it's actually very difficult to sing because first off, you have to find the key that fits your voice and a lot of people struggle with that. It's because they want it to sound right, they want it to sound perfect and I'm glad that I did find the right key for my voice and 
people seem to like it, so I keep singing the same key. And the reason why it's so difficult, I think, is because a lot of people seem to forget the words. They're so into the song that they seem to forget it in the middle. And it is very hard, I'm not going to lie. It's very hard. But once you get it down, it's like a breeze. So a couple colleges where you have been singing the national anthem, both CU and UNC. Mm -hmm. CU, I had to compete against other people to get the opportunity to actually sing it. And a couple people got through, and so did I. So when I got through, we were very, very happy, and I got to sing it, and things went really well the first time. And then UNC, that one I always done pretty often. Like, it would be weekend after weekend after weekend. So got booked on that one a lot. So those went good. So I really liked it. That's extremely exciting. And so early this year, you began singing the national anthem at Colorado Eagles games. Mm -hmm. When my dad, he sent a YouTube video to the Eagles and we were just hoping it's because we've sent other videos to other people and we're just kind of expecting like not an answer because most of them didn't and when we got an answer we were very excited we we're like okay then things just got really serious and so when we went there I was very very nervous but yet yeah, excited and when I went to go sing the national anthem they rolled out the carpet and I had to sing on ice and that was very very different and very very cold and when I sang the national anthem I did better than I thought that I was we have to give kudos to your dad, too, because mm -hmm. he took a video of you, which I watched on YouTube, of you singing <laughs> yes. at the Colorado Eagles game. He didn't have the carpet to stand on. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> what if he was wearing sneakers that had, like, those metal... No, they wouldn't let you do that. They didn't have to nope. re-smooth have to re -smooth the ice <laughs> right. afterwards. So, very nice. We are here with Brianna Davis, who is uh, joining us in the Care FC studio for the very first time, hopefully not the last. And we're hearing some great music from her today on the Emerging Artist Showcase, Care FC 88.9 FM. We are talking with Brianna Davis, and we're going to now talk about the kind of the evolution of your singing, and there have been some exciting competitions that you have been involved with. Let's talk about the X Factor. That was this past summer of 2013 and that took place at the Denver Coliseum. What a scene that must have been, all of you uh, wanting to um, perform. Well, it went really, it, I was actually not expecting like it going the way that it actually went. Um, we had to wait outside for six hours, and we had to get up very, very early. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it was very, very it, at first, it was cold outside because we went there early, and then it got super extremely hot. But when we got in there, there was sections. So then when I auditioned, they told me the first time, you're in, and they gave me the pink slip and then signed papers. And the second time I went, I didn't make it, unfortunately. But I was very, very grateful that I actually went through the first round. It's because... A lot of good people that I've heard in line, they didn't make it through. So I felt really, really blessed to actually make it. There are thousands of people. Now, there were four locations, is my understanding. Right. For auditioning. Uh, this one here in Denver, uh, middle of the country here. And so, to, like you're saying, to make it through the first round, mm -hmm. your first try through this has got to be a um, confidence <laughs> boost. Right. On KRSC 88.9 FM, we will now hear... The Taylor Swift song, Mean, as performed by Brianna Davis. You, with your words like knives and swords and weapons that you use against me, you. Knock me on my feet again, got me feeling like I'm nothing, you. With your voice like knives on a chalkboard, calling me out when I wounded you. Picking on the weaker man. You can take me down with just one single blow. But you don't know, but you don't know. Someday I'll be living for your sin. And all you're ever gonna be is me. Someday I'll be thinking of you. 
So the next competition, Brianna, that you were involved with was Colorado You Got Talent. Correct. And that was late summer, early fall, I believe? Mm Mm-hmm. Yes. So really interesting process that they did for this. Now, in Colorado, there were, I believe, four different regions that they were doing auditions for. And the one that you were involved with was up in Estes Park. Mm Mm-hmm. So when I went to go audition in Estes Park, it was actually snowing up in Estes Park. So that was just, (laughs) it was kind of like a weather shock almost. So we went up there and I sang One Step at a Time and I sang At Last. So when I sang that, they were very shocked. (laughs) They looked very shocked. And Maddie, the owner of Colorado You Got Talent, she was like, I'm putting you through, like, no doubt, I'm putting you through. And when she puts me through, we all take a picture and everything, and then we go to the regional finals. Now, would you say that their shock, obviously, the the quality of your voice, would you say that most people auditioning were a bit older than you as well? Yes, there were some older people at my auditions, and there were younger. So there's not really an age limit to mm-hmm. this competition. So through your success at Estes Park, you went to the regional finals. Mm -hmm. And that was this past August, and that was at the Rialto Theater. Yes, Rialto Theater was very nice. (laughs) But when I went to the Rialto, this competition, it was was pretty, like, rough, I would say. Like, these people were very, very good. They were all coming from different sides of Colorado, and... Mm, I wouldn't say doubt, but kind of kind of scared. It's because these people are very talented and just wondering if your talent is good enough to go to the next round. What happened was the people went and I was third. And when I went on, it actually went really well. And I made it to the finals. Congratulations. Thank you. This is really good. I mean, you're having some great experiences here. Mm-hmm. I'm very you blessed. Know. Because it's all what it is, is this experience. Mm -hmm. And to be in a situation where there can be kind of an intimidating scene with all these extremely talented people and to have the acknowledgement come your way that, yes, you are on par with all of these other people and even exceeding in your your talent, that's got to be a a great feeling to have. Mm -hmm. It's a very great feeling. And um, when I went to the finals, I sang at last... And the finals, let's talk about where that was. Mm -hmm. The finals were at the Stargazer Theater in Colorado Springs. And I sang at last just to close it all. I thought that that was a very good song choice. It's because at last kind of brings it all together and really gives the judges something to think about. Like, at last, I'm here. That went well. The judges had nothing bad to say about it. And I felt really good. And everybody gave, some people gave me a standing ovation. And I felt really good about that. People were cheering and it was just a really good feeling to have overall. So then when the whole competition was over, I won second place in the state. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. And you're talking about thousands and thousands of people from the get-go that initially wanted to be a part of this competition so all of those Mm. thousands of people to take second is extremely impressive right (laughs) thank you nice job so brianna it's very interesting how you mentioned the importance to you of song choice so going Mm. to a competition with there being so many songs to choose from that is a really important decision and we've seen that on the different talent shows where song choice Mm. is so crucial Right. So did you have help with kind of deciding what these songs going into competition are going to be? Well, when I was choosing the songs, I also had help from family, like dad, sister. So what happened was my sister chose that last for me, and that was the first song. Well, that was the second song that I ever sang, and that one really played out well. Everybody loves that song, I would think, and I like it a lot. And when I think about songs before I go to competitions, I really try to think them out. So 
when I'm on stage, it just doesn't mean anything. So like I said before, when I sang at last, I wanted it to bring it all together to close out the show. And that's at last. That was the finals. So I thought that would really make sense. We are here with Brianna on Care FC 88.9 FM. Really great to have you in the studio. <laughs> Thank you. It's nice that I'm the one kind of bringing you into the, the Care FC <laughs> fold here up in Fort Collins right. because Greeley is a neighbor, very close, but mm-hmm. there's not always a connection of artistry, I think, between the two towns. Mm-hmm. So I feel really fortunate that I met Carissa, Gabrielle, and that's how I got to meet your dad, Kenny, and through Kenny meeting you and having you in the studio. So it's really, it's really great to have you here. Mm, thank you. Really nice. nice to be here. So, with all of this great experience, you got the, to perform in front of these different audiences and different judges and to kind of see how intense it can get. America's Got Talent. Now, I don't know how much we can specifically say about this, but there are a few things perhaps that we mm-hmm. can say. This happened down at the Denver Convention Center. Right. So, when I was in, when I went to Denver and we got there, it's very, very different from X Factor. And I would say they're, they're just totally different. And when I was there, we have the front line pass. Since I got second in state to Colorado, you got talent. So since I had front of the line pass, wait was very, very brief. So when I got there, they took five people and I auditioned. And when I auditioned, everything went great, better than I thought. And they are just going to come back and tell us next year who made it. In February. You're going to hear back in February 2014. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Because having that front of the line pass at the convention center, there were, again, thousands of people because they allowed walk-ons as well. Right. Mm -hmm. I think it would be pretty cool to walk to the head of of a line of a thousand people. Right. <laughs> I'm very lucky that I actually got second place, so I would have had a frontline pass. We'll just have to wait and hear back. We're gonna you're gonna find out in mm-hmm. February. Right. And if you get chosen, which I'm assuming you will, <laughs> um, what does that entail for the next step? Well, I'm not really sure until we actually do it. So we go on from there, but from there I think that things will change and by that, I mean things will get more serious than there actually are, which isn't a bad thing, but things will just have to be, I don't know how to explain it, actually. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I, I think you did. I think that's really good. I mean, things are going to become more serious in a, in a mm-hmm. good way, of course. Right. Where do they take place once it's to that level? Where do they do that? Actually, I'm not sure yet. Yeah. I think we still have to figure out where it goes from there. And I, I would imagine that your um, your music teacher, Alicia LaFord, mm-hmm. has got to be thrilled with your progress. <laughs> I think that she is, and I'm trying to make her proud and show her how good of a student I can be. Well, you're kind of a, you're a representative of the Northern Colorado region here vocally. Right. That's got to be a fun responsibility to have. Very fun. So, Brianna Davis, I want to thank you very much for being in the studio here. Thank and, you. And uh, we're thanking good thoughts for February 2014 when you find out about America's Got Talent. Mm-hmm. And really nice to have you in the studio. Thank you so much. Thank you. The final song we'll hear from Brianna Davis today on the Emerging Artist Showcase, Beyonce's song, If I Were a Boy. If I were a boy even just for a day I'd roll out of bed in the morning and throw on what I wanted and go If I were a boy I think I could understand How it feels like
turn off my phone Tell everyone it's broken So they think that I was sleeping alone I'd put myself first And make the rules as I go I know that she'd be fair.